Hello, React Native developers. What is going on? William here, recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. I just bootstrapped a new React Native projects and I couldn't be more excited. I couldn't be more excited because now I think this is my dream uh, React Native setup. So React Native with TypeScript and Babel support, but as well ESLint. And it's amazing to see how fast uh, things are moving. So the TypeScript support with Babel and now uh, since a couple of days we can use um, ESLint on TypeScript code base out of the box. And there is as well also the uh, TypeScript support in Expo, which is, uh, I think, since version SDK 31. So things are moving fast also. That's why I wanted to make a video because uh, lots of inf information online gets quickly outdated on this topic and a lot of uh, boilerplate I found to be somewhat outdated. And I also found some um, some tutorials and some I was reading some GitHub issues on, on these topics and I found some um, uh, a lot of uh, preciseness missing, I would say, on, on, on this topic. So I just wanted to make a quick video to show you my setup. And before we get started, how were we create bootstrapping projects last year? We were using a uh, Create React Native app. Personally, I was using Flow because it had uh, the Babel support out of the box. So we didn't have to do any extra setup to use Flow. And we would have the ESLint plugins there are some uh, plugins which are extremely powerful for React and React Native. And we know that the ESLint plugins are going to become more and more important in the ecosystem with React Native, uh, with React Hooks. And so I was pretty happy with this setup. Flow was really, really difficult because you were really stuck with one version of Flow and the community, so the typings for all the libraries were much... Uh, um, they were much less uh, typings available and as well with Flow, since it was a much newer project, it was evolving and breaking, having breaking changes much uh, faster than, than TypeScript, which is way more stable now. So it was, uh, the Flow part was somewhat difficult. And since a couple of months now, we have uh, TypeScript support in Babel, so we can write or uh, TypeScript code also out of the box in a new React Native project. And since a couple of days, we can finally use our favorite ESLint plugins on the same code base, which I find to be super uh, exciting. And last thing is that a uh, couple of years ago, Expo was supporting flow out of the box. So you had great uh, flow type definition when starting a, a new project with a Create React Native app. And now since SDK 31, there is TypeScript support out of the box. So yeah, I think it's super exciting. I created a new um, script, which I use now to, to bootstrap my projects. So now we don't use a Create React Native app, but we, um, we use Expo in it and then we can install ESLint on our project and as well as, so this is a ESLint plugin, which I created because I always want to use the same ESLint rules on my all my projects. So that's one way I can uh, uh, centralize um, my ESLint rules. So I created this plugin. You don't have to use it, of course. I mean, we all have different, uh, uh, it's a matter of taste, right? But I think it's uh, extremely useful to look at this plugin to see how you can out of the box um, support your um, TypeScript code, code base with your uh, ESLint plugins. And it's using the, so if we go back to the dependency, it's using the ESLint config Airbnb, ESLint plugin React, ESLint plugin React Native. So all the, stuff which I love with this ESLint. So we install this plugin, we rename app.js in uh, app.txt, and then I need to download uh, two, three files, sorry. So the TS config that we're gonna need, my uh, ESLint RC file, which is very simple, I can show it to you quickly, right? Because I just basically 
uh, use my plugin and I need this extra to download this extra type definition for the web speech API which Expo depends on and I think I think basically Expo depends on two types which are defined here maybe a speech synthesis event and another one speech synthesis utterance I think what's happening is that Expo might be assuming a, a type dependency with the DOM API or the React Native yeah because React Native basically defines a lot of uh, um, DOM APIs right like uh, document and so on or event but this one is not available in uh, in the React Native type definition so I download this type definition and we can look at the TS config file target ES2017 lib ES6 GSX React Native no emit now um, TypeScript is just a type checker which I think is, is great um, strict type checking options set everything to true that's how I like it same for additional checks module resolution node extremely important to set this option uh, in order for all the modules to and types definitions to properly resolve and also you know for instance we are probably using the slash index dot ts pattern and so on to to resolve your module so that's done using a module resolution node allo synthetic default imports I needed to set it to true because I think either the React or the React Native type definition relies on it somehow. I guess this will be updated at some point, but for now we, we need it. Um, type React and React Native, we need it for, so we need to include the web speech API.t.ts, which Expo relies on. And this relies on type definitions from uh, react native for the document type definition event type definition um yeah and i'm not sure maybe there's another way to solve this issue uh, but that's how i i am solving it at the moment so let's try it out uh sh rn init we're going to create a new test project Here yeah, I'm adding the extra dependencies. All right, so CD test. We're gonna start the project, open it in VS Code. So here we have our app.txt file and so probably it's starting but it, yeah so you see the ESLint is uh, is working out of the box you need to configure uh, VS code in order to uh, do linting on um, TypeScript file as well. So if you go in extensions, ESLint, edit in. So you see in ESLint validate, I added TypeScript and TypeScript React. So that will allow you to have these ESLint errors directly in your files. We can also have directly, of course, the. Um, TypeScript error. We can start the project. We can um, also run TypeScript to do the type checking.
So no errors, but let's try for instance to import expo. So maybe we use uploading from expo. So by the way, uh, in the latest Canadian React Native video, people were complaining because I was using, um, I would say a quite uh, weird setup with my uh, VS code and, and JavaScript. And people were complaining that, you know, I didn't have any good uh, code completion and so on. Now that I'm using TypeScript, uh, this is fixed. I have like great uh, code completions, for instance, I can use this component and let's say I want to know like which attributes I need to use. What else? Let's see. Let's try to compile again. Meanwhile, the app is working here. And try to run that again. I'm not sure if it was saved. So here we have the uploading screen. That's why it's stuck at this state. And yeah, no compile error. So that's pretty much it. That's how I'm uh, I'm bootstrapping a new React Native projects this year. What do you guys think? Um, let me know what you think. I would love to to hear from you and. I hope you find it useful and maybe hopefully you can uh, as well give me some uh, tips. So I'm uh, looking forward to talk to you guys soon. And in the meantime, happy coding, happy hacking. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.